Hi everyone, welcome to the Swift Arcade. I'm your host, Jonathan Rasmus. One of the challenges with getting started with core data is knowing how to use this thing called code gen. Code gen is this option we choose when we're generating our entities in core data. And it's not exactly clear which one we should use and when. So in this episode, we're gonna demystify some of that. We're gonna go through all three options and explain where one type of code gen makes sense and where it doesn't. So come on in. So the way CodeGen works in Xcode is when you create a new entity in your data model project, one of the options you have when you are deciding how to generate the code for that employee is this thing over here called CodeGen. So the drop down here, you've got three different options. And what all of these three options are really trying to do is determine how to get access to the two classes core data needs in order to do your processing in Swift. It needs a class file where your entity has to extend NS managed object. And it's looking for a properties file, which gives access to all the attributes you describe in your core identity data model. So what CodeGen is really all about is just saying, hey, how do I want to generate these files? And the three options here are manually none, meaning you are going to be responsible for creating these files yourself. You can choose class definition, in which case Xcode will generate both of these files for you, or you can pick the middle of the road extension, Cadre extension, in which case it'll generate the extension file, but you need to create the class file yourself. So let's dive in now and see how all of these work in code. Okay, so here I am creating a brand new Xcode project. I'm selecting the core data option here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, hide some files here, kind of clean up the project. And then I'm gonna click on my data model file and I'm gonna add a new entity here called employee and I'm gonna give it two attributes. First, I'm gonna get an attribute in there called first name, make it of type string. Then I'm gonna add a last name also of type string. And now we're basically ready. We're ready to tell Xcode what we would like core data to do in generating these files along with which of the three methods it should use when going about and doing it. Okay, so now CodeGen comes into work. Here we get to decide how we would like to generate the files that are ultimately gonna give us access to them in our code. Let's start off with the simplest of them all, class definition. So class definition is the one we want if we want Xcode to generate these files for us. Watch what happens when we go Command B, and then I also exit Xcode, and bring it back up. And now if we go into our view controller and we try to actually make use of our employee, what we will have in here is a class that compiles and we have access to our employee. Now, if we go take a look at this class, it's got everything we need in there. It's got the NS managed object, but if I go to find it and I try to find it in my navigator by going shift command J, it's not there. In fact, where is it? It's not in our project anywhere. And that is by intention. If we go take a look at where this shows up in our finder, we will see that Xcode has generated these files way, way down in our derived data. So these are files that are hands off. We shouldn't be touching them and Xcode doesn't want us touching them. It's gonna generate these files for us and just make them available for us in our file. So you can always double click and take a look at the files it generated for us just to see what it looks like. Here they are. It's given us our attributes. That's how class definition works. It's for if you want Xcode to manage and generate these files 100% for you. Okay, so now let's go in the complete opposite direction. Let's do everything manually. Let's go back into our data model file. Let's click our entity. And this time, let's switch from class definition to manual. Let's uh, clean the project, shift control command K to give it a good clean. I'm now going to go command B to run and whoa, did you see what happened there? Our generated files disappeared because now we're doing everything manually. So now if we go back to our view controller, it doesn't know what employee is anymore. We can't go find that file. It's like, hey, what happened? This is manual mode. This is where now you're taking on the responsibility to generate these classes for this core data entity itself. Now, fortunately, there's a nice, easy way to do this. If we go back into our data model, select the employee here and go up to editor, 
create NS Manage Object subclass. This is a tool built into Xcode that'll actually generate these files for you. You just say the, mo the data model you'd like these to be generated for, the entities where you'd like to save them, and it will plop these right down in your project for you. So this is great. It's created these files for us. It enables us to now access them in our view controller. We can start using these, we do a command B, but the one difference now is these files will no longer be kept in sync for us. We need to take the responsibility now, if we add another attribute, these won't be auto-generated. That's the downside of going manual. The plus side, however, is we can add some extra functionality in here that we'd like. For example, if we wanted to add a little bit more processing that maybe would combine our first name and last name into a computed attribute, we can add code that does that like this. We can take our first name attribute, our last name, combine them into this thing called full name, and we could go ahead and make use of that property in our project itself. Okay, so that brings us now to our third option, which is the category extension. So when you click category extension, what you're really getting is kind of the best of both worlds. You're getting Xcode generating the extension file for you, but you get to create the class file itself. So you can still add your extra processing in there. So I'm just gonna delete these files that we got from the manual generation. We're not gonna use those anymore. And if we go ahead and do a command B now and a clean, we should be able to go back into our file here and employee should eventually work. Sometimes you need to restart Xcode to bring these things back up again. Let's just do that. And when you do, you're gonna notice that it's gonna say, hey, I can't find employee. And that's because with the category extension, you need to define employee yourself. So what that means is that you need to generate the file. In this case, we're gonna create a new Swift file called employee. We need to bring in the code, which is going to make employee work, which means importing core data, dropping in some code like this, basically what we had before. And now if we go Command B and we go back to our file, we'll see that we do get employee compiling and we are free to go ahead and use that in our project. So at the end of the day, which option is right for you really comes down to how much control you want over your core data generated files. If you want full control, go manual. If you're fine with no control, click class definition. And if you'd like some control, go with the category extension as it gives you that best middle road between the two. Okay, I hope that was useful. Tell me if you liked the video below in the comments and let me know if there's other core data mysteries out there you'd like solved. And hit subscribe if you found this interesting and you'd like to learn more about this and other Swift related topics. Okay, take care everyone, stay safe. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.